Hi everyone. Tonight's video follows the journey of a protein that is destined to be secreted from the cell, starting with its code in DNA to its final exit from the cell. So the reason we're going through this is it happens to go through a lot of the organelles pictured here in the cell. So you can see I've got a nucleus pictured with a chromosome with some DNA in it. And the journey of our protein that's starting out as being coded for in DNA starts in our nucleus, which holds the DNA. It will involve the ribosomes, the rough endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi apparatus, secretory vesicles, and microtubules. So it's a great way to put together all the facts that you've learned about the organelles in the cell. You should have learned about all of these organelles before watching this video. So this whole process starts in the nucleus. A nucleus is of course found in all eukaryotes, so plants, animals, fungi, and protists, and its function is to contain and protect the genetic information. So here's a drawing of what a nucleus might look like. Inside the nucleus, you have your chromosomes, which are made of DNA. The nuclear membrane is actually a double membrane bilayer. So it has two bilayers, making for a total of four layers of phospholipids. The DNA that's inside the nucleus never leaves the nucleus. It's too valuable. It has to stay protected inside the nucleus. But the problem is DNA codes for proteins and the machinery necessary to read the genetic code and build those proteins is in the cytoplasm. So how do we get the information that's in the DNA out to the location where the machinery is to build our proteins. Well, that's where the nuclear pore comes into play. So you can see here, there's actually these breaks in the nuclear double membrane here called nuclear pores. And nuclear pores allow material to flow in and out in a very controlled manner. You can think of it as there's a guard at the gate here. So not just anything gets to come and go. I've got a scanning electron micrograph pictured here, and can you see that here is a nucleus inside, and here's the cell membrane. And can you see these little, looks like little pits in the nuclear membrane? Those are actually nuclear pores in the actual membrane of a cell. So let's take a closer look at our nucleus now. So here again, I've got my nuclear double membrane, and I'm just showing you one chromosome, which I have just abbreviated as this one double-stranded DNA molecule. Each chromosome actually has many different genes, and each one of these genes would have the code to tell the cell how to make one protein. We're just gonna focus on one gene right now. Now, like I said, DNA never leaves the nucleus, so this gene is going to stay in the nucleus, but it has the information on how to build a protein, and that information needs to get out here to the cytoplasm. So through a process called transcription, which is covered in a later video on this channel, and we will cover later this year, a copy of that gene is made in the form of mRNA. mRNA is a nucleic acid. It's single-stranded, but it has the same code as the DNA. So it's truly just a copy. You can think of it just like a photocopy of the gene in DNA. And the thing about mRNA, it can leave the nucleus through that nuclear pore. So now I've got mRNA out in the cytoplasm and it has the same code as the DNA. So in other words, I have now moved the code for how to make that protein out to the cytoplasm, which is where the machinery is that's going to make the protein. So now I'm taking a little bit more of a big picture look at my cell. So let me orient you. We've got our cell membrane here and here's the cytoplasm. This is the nucleus with the chromosome and it had the gene for how to make this protein. The mRNA, which is a copy of this gene, is now in the cytoplasm. And out here in the cytoplasm are also organelles called ribosomes. Ribosomes come in two subunits. They're very imaginatively named. We have the large subunit and the small subunit. So I've drawn a really large version of a ribosome here, but in the cytoplasm I have large and small subunits of ribosomes. So ribosomes are made of protein and RNA. They are not surrounded by a membrane. The ribosome's job, its function, is to read the code in mRNA, and then it assembles the amino acids in the correct order and makes that primary sequence for the protein. It assembles the amino acids, 
putting a peptide bond in between each amino acid, forming that primary code, that polymer of amino acids that forms the protein. So let's look just at my chromosome here, and here's got my whole cell. So each ribosomal subunit, what it's going to do, it's going to clip on to the mRNA that's in the cytoplasm. Again, that's a copy of my gene in the DNA. It's going to start reading the code that's in the mRNA, and it's going to read that code and it's going to add the correct amino acids in the correct order with peptide bonds. And as it does, the ribosome moves down the mRNA. It just keeps adding new, MR, new amino acids according to what the code says. So each of these different colored dots is what I've used to indicate a different amino acid. And the ribosome has put these together in the correct order based on what the code says in the mRNA. So here we have my growing chain of amino acid. It's my protein polymer that's starting to grow. Now, if the protein being made is an intracellular protein, in other words, a protein whose job is to stay inside the cell, the ribosome is just going to continue reading the mRNA, and it's going to assemble those amino acids, and it's going to complete making the protein in the cytoplasm, and we're pretty much done. However, if the mRNA codes for a secretory protein, in other words, for a protein whose job is outside of the cell, it has to be secreted outside the cell, then the ribosome is going to reach a signal in this mRNA. And that signal is going to tell the mRNA to bring, I'm sorry, it's going to tell the ribosome to bring the mRNA to a structure called the RER, or rough endoplasmic reticulum, to finish building this protein. So the rough endoplasmic reticulum is pictured here. It's made of membrane and it's a phospholipid bilayer and it's continuous with the outer layer of the nuclear membrane. So here we have the nuclear membrane and it just continuously goes into the RER. The RER is covered in ribosomes. That's why it's called rough, because when scientists first saw it in an electron microscope or in an any microscope, it looked like it had little bumps on it and those bumps were ribosomes. So the function of this RER here is to complete the synthesis and then modify the proteins that are going to be secreted from the cell. So when my ribosome gets to this signal, it's going to tell the ribosome, bring this whole structure to the RER where the protein is going to finish being made. So now I'm looking at a little bit of a higher magnification look at a cell. So let me orient you. We have our nucleus here where the chromosome would be with the gene for my protein. I have my cytoplasm out here, my nuclear membrane, which is continuous with the RER, which is a membrane with ribosomes attached to it. And out here in the cytoplasm is my ribosome that was reading the code in the mRNA and assembling the amino acids in the correct order based on what the mRNA code said. And it got to that signal protein, to that signal piece. It's not a signal protein, I'm sorry. That signal is what's going to tell the ribosome, you've got to take everything to the RER. So the ribosome's going to bring everything to the RER to something called a docking protein. This is a protein that's sitting in the membrane of the RER. So the ribosome, mRNA, and the growing protein move here and they dock onto the RER. And the growing protein is now actually inserted into the interior of the RER. The inside of this RER is called the RER lumen. So once the ribosome has docked on the docking protein, it continues reading the mRNA, and it is now adding amino acids to the growing protein, but that growing protein is now growing inside the lumen of the RER. Once the ribosome is done, it will let go of the docking protein and the protein that is newly made will be here in the interior of the RER. Look, it has already formed its tertiary structure because the R groups of each amino acid will naturally um, bind to their affinity amino acids based on ionic interactions or hydrogen bonds or disulfide linkages. Now, let's look at this even more magnified. So if we look at, we're just looking at one arm of the RER here, and this is the cytoplasm, and this is the RER lumen. And here is my protein that's already folded into its tertiary structure. 
The synthesis has been completed, but it needs to be modified. It's not ready to leave the cell yet. So the job of the RER is, first of all, it adds sugar units to each end of the protein. That turns this protein into a glycoprotein. The glycoprotein is now ready to move on to the next organelle to continue its modification. So what we see happening is something called a transport vesicle pinches off from one arm of the RER. Transport vesicles are like bubbles. They're surrounded by a phospholipid bilayer and our protein is going to make its way into this transport vesicle and eventually it's going to be pinched off and so that we see here in our cell we've got our nucleus, our RER, and my transport vesicle with my protein is in the cytoplasm. This transport vesicle is going to move the protein from the RER to its next stop in its process and that's to an organelle called the Golgi apparatus. The transport vesicle doesn't just float around in the cell, it's going to move along a structure called a microtubule. And a microtubule is a part of the cytoskeleton and it's like a train track. The vesicle uses these and it uses a motor protein to walk along the microtubule. Microtubules themselves do not have membranes, so they're unique organelles. My transport vesicle is going to move along my microtubule until it reaches the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus is a series of membrane sacs and they're all made of phospholipid bilayers. The function of the Golgi apparatus is to further modify the protein and package it, either to be secreted from the cell or inserted into a membrane. So let's take a closer look at our Golgi apparatus. So here we have our series of membrane sacs. The transport vesicle is going to come along and fuse with the Golgi, releasing the glycoprotein into the lumen of the Golgi. What's going to happen here is a variety of modifications can happen in the Golgi apparatus to our protein. First of all, you see one of the sugar units has been removed. As it moves through the different stacks of the Golgi, we see a phosphate has been added. We see now that, oh, the sugar units have been added onto on this end, and then even a methyl group has been added. Many things can happen in modification to a protein in the Golgi. It could have a lipid added to it. It could even be cut into several pieces. When the secretory protein is finally done, a secretory vesicle containing the modified protein is going to pinch off of one arm of the Golgi in a very similar way that the transport vesicle pinched off of the RER. This secretory vesicle is going to bring our finely modified protein to its final destination. Transport vesicles are really just like any other vesicle. They just, I'm sorry, secretory vesicles are just like transport vesicles, but their final destination differs in that they're going to the plasma membrane. So here we have my secretory vesicle. And again, it's going to move along a microtubule. It's not just gonna float around the cell and it's going to move using a motor protein and it's going to move down the microtubule until it finally fuses with the cell membrane. And when it does that, the contents or our protein that's to be secreted is released to the exterior environment and it's now ready to do its job outside of the cell. So you should be able to trace the journey of a secretory protein from its code in DNA to its final release outside of the cell. So that's all for tonight.